So I've got to start this video off by dispelling a myth very quickly. And that myth is one that I feel like even I uh, talk about on my channel fairly often and maybe give validity to. And that is that bass are always relating to the bottom. That you're always going to be throwing your baits and making sure they're getting to the bottom. You're going to be hopping them off the bottom. That's always where fish are going to be. And that is just not the case. In today's video, we're going to talk about the situations in which those bass are not at all relating to the bottom, but they are in fact suspended up into the water column. Where to fish for those fish and of course, how to catch them. My name is Tyler Anderson and let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers. So hit that subscribe button if you are new here. And if you like bass fishing instructionals, you have found the right channel. And so as, you, as I talked about in the intro to this video, this video is all about suspended bass. How to catch those fish that oftentimes, at least in my experience, are some of the trickiest ones to catch. So we're gonna kind of go over, I have my notes here on my phone. We're gonna go over kind of three main points. Uh, why bass suspend, in which situations I find that bass will not relate to the bottom. They will suspend off the bottom. Two is going to be how deep those bass usually suspend. And three, of course, how do you catch those fish? Now make sure you guys stay tuned to the end because we have some incredible fish catches with some big big Texas bass coming. So with that said, let's hop into the learning. So starting with number one, why do bass suspend? I think there are four main reasons, and I really can only think of four total reasons, why bass suspend in the water column. And I'm gonna go in order of, I think, the, the most likely uh, reason for those bass to be suspending in order of most likely to least likely. So situation A is going to be a change in the forage they are eating. I think when you have fish that are feeding on crawfish or kind of more bottom dweller forage species, and then whether it's scarcity or just time of the year, they transition more to a, a pelagic sort of forage. So, a, a, you know, a shad, a cisco, a bait fish of some kind, that is when you're going to find fish don't relate to the bottom as much, but kind of float up into the water column, sit there and feed. Situation B is going to be increased fishing pressure. Any place you go around the country nowadays, you're gonna find more and more fishermen than ever before. And that is great. I'm super happy that fishing is growing, but that doesn't mean that fish are seeing more and more of the same lures that you are throwing. And I have found, especially in, in big lakes, when fish see the same lures on the bottom all the time, they're just not gonna sit on the bottom. They may still feed on the bottom, but they're not gonna actually make their dwelling, their life, on the bottom of the lake, and so they're gonna suspend. So when they see the same Cinco's, jigs, crankbaits, oftentimes you're gonna find that they uh, it'll float up into the water column. And by float, I don't mean like they're dead and they float up. I mean like they fill up their, their water bladders to certain equilibrium where they can actually sit higher up in the water. Situation C is going to be a water change. So whether you're talking about a water temperature change or a water color change, that can cause those bass to suspend. The most likely way that I found bass suspend when it comes to water change is a dropping in the water temperature. I don't think a, a super fast increase in water temperature is going to cause them to, uh, to suspend, but definitely a drop in water temperature will. That is why you find in the summertime, those bass are oftentimes super deep, sitting out there on brush piles, rock piles, and as the water gets colder and colder throughout the fall and the winter hits, those bass are almost always suspending in the water column. And situation D is going to be a weather change. What I mean by that is a uh, usually barometric pressure switch from high to low or low to high. That can affect those fish. I've just found that it is the least likely to affect how fish sit in the water. Moving on to point number two. Let's say you're out there fishing and the fish have been biting consistently on, let's say, a, a Texas rigged creature bait for the last two weeks. And then all of a sudden, whether it's a weather change, water change, you know, increased fishing pressure, those fish just don't bite the same lures they used to. And you've tried everything else when it comes to fishing on the bottom. It's time for you to start fishing up in the water column for those suspended bass. But no matter where you are in the country, you're going to have a variance of water depth. So I don't care if you're in a pond, uh, a creek, a river, or stream, there's going to be variances and how deep those fish can suspend. So, so that leads us to ask the question, how deep do those bass suspend in my body of water? And sadly, I really don't have an answer for you because depending on where you are in the country, your water clarity, your depth in general, 
the bass can suspend really in any depth of water. And as you're gonna see in these fish catches here at the end of the video, I caught fish on this body of water in two weeks, two or three weeks apart from each other in super deep water. And then today those fish were also suspending, but they were suspending higher up in the water column as the day got along. And so those fish could change by the hour. And so the one thing that I can say I guess really two things. Uh, first is that those bass are gonna follow the forage. So if the forage, the, the bait fish, the shad is deep, they're most likely gonna be suspended deep. And if the forage is shallow, usually they're gonna be shallow. But the number one thing that you guys can look for in your bodies of water is something called the thermocline. If you've been around bass fishing for any amount of time, you've probably heard of the term thermocline. And even myself, until last night when I watched a bunch of videos to prepare for this video, I didn't quite know what the thermocline was. I just knew that one thing was true about it, and it was that bass do not sit below the thermocline. It's basically impossible to find bass that are sitting and living underneath the thermocline. Now, I did some research for you guys, and the thermocline is actually the area where hot water on the top and cold water on the bottom meet. And it just forms this very, very dense area where the water temperature changes drastically, drastically from warm to cold, and you find almost no oxygen down below that thermocline. And really the only way to see a thermocline is on your fish finder. I'll insert some pictures here on the screen of what a thermocline looks like. It is usually a thick band, almost looks like interference or a ton of bait fish. That's usually what the thermocline is. A few key things about the thermocline. Uh, one, they're not found in rivers or streams, any sort of flowing water, even uh, bodies of water with a, a lot of wind or wind current, you're not gonna usually find a thermocline because that allows basically anywhere from the top of the water column all the way to the bottom to be the same temperature temperature, so you're not going to find a difference uh, in temperature there that merits a thermocline. The thermocline is definitely going to be found deeper in clear water than it is in dirty water, just because sunlight can get down to clear water and heat up kind of deeper in that water column more than it can in dirty water. And the experts, whoever they are, the article I read, uh, they say that the thermocline la forms in the summer when you have that, you know, super hot sun warming up that water in the upper side of the water column, but it can't quite reach down to the bottom. That's where the thermocline forms. And then as the fall continues uh, and cold fronts start coming in, the thermocline flips. It's called the turnover. Now here in Texas, I don't believe we have a turnover. I have never seen one before. And that is when you have so much cold fronts that come through that it actually takes that, that area above the thermocline line and it makes that water colder than what's down below. So of course, based on temperature, uh, it has to flip. In Texas, I found that we just don't have that many cold fronts in a row. And so you're just gonna have your temperatures kind of slowly start to gain equilibrium to each other and the thermocline kind of dissipates. So with point number two, you know, how deep do those fish suspend? Of course, it depends on where the thermocline is and where those bait fish are, all depending on your body of water. So point number three and the purpose of why you guys are probably here on this video is how do you catch those suspended bass? Now that we know why they suspend, how deep they suspend, and all the factors that impact those two things, how do you catch those bass? And to be honest, we've gotten to the difficult part. Catching suspended bass is definitely not an easy task. In my experience, it is the hardest thing to do in bass fishing is to catch fish, at least consistently, that are sitting higher up in the water column. I love catching bass that are sitting in a, in a, in a grass bed, in, in a brush pile underneath a dock, because you know exactly the places those bass could be. If you're fishing in some place that's got 50 foot of water depth, you have no clue how deep those bass are going to suspend. And so when it comes to which lures you should throw to catch suspended bass, I'm gonna stick with basically one main category, and that is going to be the shad or bait fish category. And I think it's pretty obvious why, because I've never seen a crawfish swimming in 35 foot of water before. And usually bluegills, while they will hang in deep water sometimes, they don't usually hang, especially in smaller groups. They might be in a huge group and they're over a brush pile or, or they're near a grass line. But when it comes to just strict open water, bait fish is going to be what you are wanting to imitate in your lure selection. So the lures to throw in the shad category, of course, depend on how deep your bass are suspending. And so if you have a a bass boat or a kayak and you have a fish finder, you are able to see at least in some kind of detail. It doesn't have to be the, the you know the Garmin live scope that I have or a crazy side scan or down scan. If you just have regular sonar, you'll be able to tell uh, in what water column those fish are suspending in. And so you'll know exactly how deep to retrieve your lures. But let's say that you are in a pond or you're in a bass boat and you just have pretty crummy electronics. You have to go the old trial and error method. So my two categories, I'm gonna go by, by depth here. From zero to 10 feet, 
feet beneath the water, so zero being the surface, 10 being 10 feet below the surface, I'm gonna go with a jerk bait, either a hard or a soft jerk bait. I found that's the best way in general, I think to either search to find your fish or once you've idled over a few to catch those fish. And then when it comes to anything over 10 foot, your opportunities broaden extensively. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read off some of my favorites here, the Alabama rig, a spoon, whether it's a flutter spoon or a jigging spoon, crankbaits, uh, some sort of single head swim bait. You've got a chatter bait that I'll even throw a little bit deeper. Really a lot of stuff opens up for you uh, in that 10 plus depth category. And I'm not saying you can't throw an A rig or a spoon in that zero to 10 category. I've just found that I usually throw jerk bait uh, and that's most effective for me catching those higher up fish that are suspending. And the last tip that I have for you guys before we hop into some fish catches is that you have to keep your lures above the bass's eyeballs. Because bass are sitting here in the water column, their eyeballs are up here on the top of their head. They can't see your lure and maybe they can sense it, you know, because of their lateral lines or whatever. But I have found that most of the time a bass will not hit a lure. And I've watched them do it on my graph before. A bass will hardly ever go down to eat a lure, but they will almost always at least come up to check out your lure because they can see it. And so if your bass are suspending at 15 feet of water, don't throw your lure in 17 feet of water. Throw it in 15 to 10, maybe even a little bit higher than that. I like to keep it within, you know, two to five feet of those bass's eyeballs because especially in clear water, they can find that bait from a long ways away. But I think it's just a confidence thing for them. They don't want to have to go down to find something. They want to go up. I think it's a lot easier for them, both confidence wise and probably bodily to actually swim up to see your lure. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that learning portion of the video. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, we have tons of awesome fish catches from here on this body of water from Alabama rigs to spoons to swim baits and everything in between on some big old Lunker Texas bass. So we'll see y'all next time. Got him on the earring. Saw him? No, I didn't see him this time. Oh, oh, bacon. That one just came out of nowhere. I just cast to where I knew they were suspended. Got him. Mm, is it grande? I don't think so. Just flailing around. Oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Wow. Yeah. I'm gonna both of them. Oh. Oh, yes, sir. Let's go. Wow. Alrighty. Nice one on the uh, on the air rig. They were suspended right there in I don't know 15, 17 feet of water, and that fish came up and nabbed it. Thanks, buddy. There's not much thermocline anymore. Oh, holy cow. My gracious. Oh. Got him? Oh, had him? Yep. Oh my goodness, big one too. All right, look at that. That's such a healthy fish. Holy smokes. This is awesome. We are on top of some fish right now. <laughs> Gosh, I got hit. There's one. Yes. Bigger one. Also got him foul hooked. Unless I got him foul hooked, that's a big one. Come on. Nice one. Nice one. Nice one on this spoon. Bring in here. Yes. That's a chunker right there. My dad's got one too? Yep. Hey, hey. Look at that thing on the flutter spoon. That is amazing. Big old spoon in the face. Oh, that fish was sitting right there. Same exact depth column as they all are. You just gotta keep in touch with your lure down there and you'll get them. That is a chunky fish. Holy smokes, look at that thing. That's great. Oh yeah, come on. Oh, it is an airy day. <laughs> wow. They are higher in the water column than I think they are. That's crazy. That is crazy. They have risen. They are risen indeed. <laughs> look at that. Oh, boy, look at that thing right there. Look at that big old chunky monkey. Ah, yes. What a day. What a time. What a year. Got him. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Just a good sized fish. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Let's go. Oh, the chunky dunk. Oh, that boy right there. Beautiful. Plunk. 
fish. Got him? Yep. Nice job. Nice. Oh, big one. Nice. That's the biggest one of the day, maybe? Maybe. Hey, you clam, yeah. clam, 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 clam. But again, that crankbait was not hitting the bottom, right? No. Nope. Suspended crankbait fish. Maybe the pliers down there somewhere. Thank you, friend. Oh, it's just right over there. Oh, good. Downfall Yeah. But that live scope would happen a whole lot more. There's one. Man, they're high up in the water column. That's just crazy. They've moved up. They're like sunning themselves. Within the first like 10 feet of the water column. That's nuts. Oh, spin, spin, spin. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, no. Yeah, scroungers.